Welcome to this, uh, this sacred movie palace, the TCL Chinese Theater. We, uh, we turn these events, we turn these ceremonies into events, right? We have, uh, we have the press here, uh, we have fans here, thank you guys so much uh, for coming. We have, you know, very, very important people here. Uh, but this moment that we're in right now, all of us together today, is, is much more, I think, than a little piece of show business. This town, uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles, has taken far too long to recognize and honor the work that gets created here. This art form that we love so much, it matters. It is important. You know, remember the Academy Museum, it didn't open until last year. Yet the first movie studio showed up on Sunset Boulevard in 1911. 1913, Cecil B. DeMille headed west from New York. He wanted to make a western called The Squaw Man. Got off the train in Flagstaff, Arizona, ready to start production, but the weather was bad, the ground was hard, so he cabled producers Jesse Lasky and Sam Goldfish, later Sam Goldman, back in New York, told them he wanted to rent a barn for $75, quote, in this place called Hollywood. So I like to think that if the weather had been better in Flagstaff that day, we might well be doing this hand and footprint ceremony in front of the AMC 18 in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> where it's going to be 103 degrees on Tuesday, so thank you, Flagstaff. Um, you know, I, I was just talking to, to Jane Fonda. My, my, my grandfather, Herman Mankiewicz, was a, a successful screenwriter, wrote to Citizen Kane, but anybody who saw the movie Mank knows that Herman spent most of his life ashamed of writing movies. Thankfully, we know better now. We know how important this art form is. This theater has known that for nearly 100 years. Norma Talmadge, Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks were the first to have their hands and feet immortalized here at what was then Grauman's Chinese Theater, that was 1927. Joan Crawford closed out the 1920s. 80 years ago, Henry Fonda, Rita Hayworth, Edward G. Robinson, Greer Garson, they were all here. 70 years ago, Ava Gardner and Clifton Webb. In 1967, 55 years ago, Sidney Poitier had his moment here. Ten years later, in 1977, LA's first and only black mayor, Tom Bradley, served 20 years as the mayor of this town, had his hands and feet enshrined where we stand today. 30 years ago, Harrison Ford and Michael Keaton. 20 years ago, Morgan Freeman. 10 years ago, Kim Novak. And in 2013, Jane Fonda, who's here again today, and who all you your shirt for you. This place, this theater, this great theater, understood that movies mattered to us, and they understood it much sooner than the rest of us. And it is fitting that the next immortalized extremities belong to a genuine successor to those legendary names. I use the word genuine because it certainly applies to Lily Tomlin, who has brought this wonderful authenticity, yes, this authenticity to her work for five decades. A few years ago, she told the New York Times, quote, I wanted to see the characters I've played as human beings and see, them and see themselves in them too. The humanity she brings to the plate has enabled her to transition seemingly with ease from groundbreaking comedy work on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, to Grace and Frankie, where she has earned four nominations and three, three Screen Actors Guild nominations starring alongside Jane Fonda. That authenticity is also fully on display in Lily Tomlin's one-woman show, The Search for Signs of Life in the Universe. How's that, uh, how's that working out, by the way? And then, real quick, the movies. The Late Show, Nashville, All of Me, Flirting with Disaster, I Heart Huckabee's, Grandma from 2015. I could list more, but I think it's time to let Lily's friend do the talking. So before I bring her up, I just want to uh, finish up by saying that, that for a while this morning, it's great to see them here because it didn't look like Jane or, or Lily would make it. Uh, they had a rough morning, but they, uh, but they tumbled out of bed and they stumbled to the kitchen <laughs> where they poured themselves a cup of ambition. Thankfully, they yawned and stretched. Indeed, they did come to life. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Lily Tomlin's friend, her co-star, a two-time winner of the Academy Award for Best Actress, one of the defining actors of her generation, Jane Fonda. Lily's been pushing me around for decades. So 
I'm really glad she's going to put her hands in cement. Maybe they'll get stuck. <laughs> and her feet, too. <laughs> you know, um, acting is a profession of empathy. You can't, you can't pierce the core of another person and enter her and understand her unless you have a whole lot of empathy. And Lily Tomlin, I think, carries an ex extraterrestrial bag of empathy with her. I don't know, she has more empathy than, than anybody I've ever met. And I think that that's one of the reasons why her comedy is so different than most comedians. At least the comedy that she and her partner Jane Wagner create is very different. Comedy is really hard. You know, it's a lot harder than, than drama. It's hard to make people laugh. And about 99% of comedians make people laugh at the expense of somebody. You know, sometimes it's at the comedian's expense, their own expense, but still, it's always at somebody's expense. Never does Lily Tomlin make a joke at someone's expense. You know, I've, I've worked with her now for a whole long time, since the 1970s, and she is always fighting against any words or statements that would hurt someone's feelings. You know, if you, if you look at the material that she and Jane have developed, her own material, you watch her sketches and her that amazing one-woman show that that Ben referred to, only he left out the word intelligent, and that's important. The search of signs of intelligent life in the universe. Um, she played 12 different characters, 12 different characters, each one fully fleshed out. And I, I just want you to listen to some of my favorite lines from that play. Delusions of grandeur make me feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> All my life I wanted to be somebody. Now I see I should have been more specific. <laughs> I personally believe we develop language because of our deep inner need to complain. <laughs> See what I mean? And of course, Lily would be the first to say, yeah, but that was created by my partner, Jane Wagner. She wrote those lines. She came up with those ideas. And yeah, that's true. And ideally, Jane's hands and hooves would be right there next to next to Lily's, because for more than 40 decades, those two have been a unique creative pair. They literally changed the face of comedy. But it's Lily who embodied all those characters, including little Edith Ann and Ernestine, the phone operator, and, and so many others. And she can bring them all to life, partly because of her empathy and partly because of her deep, attention. She notices people's idiosyncrasies. It's unbelievable. So empathy, deep skill of concentration, and the refusal to ever be facile, which makes me so frigging angry. <laughs> because, you know, it's one in the morning, you've been working for 15 hours, the crew is tired, man, can I get facile. <laughs> Not Lily. Never Lily. So it is with deep love and gratitude and respect that I want to bring up here now the one and only Lily Tom. <laughs> you know, I, I, the fact that, uh, that this ceremony is a bit surreal to me, 
uh, doesn't in any way diminish the gratitude I feel for every single person who made it possible. Uh, as a young performer, I dreamed the sky was the limit. And here I am being celebrated as a sidewalk. <laughs> from having to hit the pavement to being the pavement. <laughs> like everyone, I grew up mesmerized by the, the stories on the big screen. I, I studied them, but this is a plot twist I never anticipated. I mean, in the movies, if you were told you were getting your feet in cinnamon, your footprints in cinnamon, cement, in cinnamon, <laughs> That meant that two tough guys in fedoras would throw you in the trunk of the car and drop you off at the pier of water. I'm almost certain that's not going to happen to me today, but you never know. There's never enough time to thank all the people who have been so helpful along the way, but I must mention a few. One of these thrills is knowing my slab of concrete will end up near the one made by the brilliant and beautiful woman who introduced me, my, my dear friend. Um, I, I sported a clute hairdo for two years. <laughs> and I remember the first night she came backstage at the Amazon Center when I was playing and she swept in in a big cape and she looked so glamorous and uh, she probably had a bunch of leaflets in her pocket. She was going to pass out to the audience. And I, knew, I, and I was so thrilled that she came because, uh, and unfortunately, the clute era had my hair. I had to make a different hairdo, and so she never even got to see it. Jane Fonda. Of course, there's no way I would be here today without the love, support, and genius of my partner, writer Jane Wagner. So far on the side, George Schlatter saw me on the Gary Moore Show in 1969. on his show to join the cast of Laugh-In. Seemingly overnight, I went from spending my days typing up market research at the Plaza Hotel, to which I had to enter from the servant's uh, door in the basement because hippies were not allowed in the lobby. <laughs> and I went to co-starring on the most revolutionary comedy variety show of its era. George, I am eternally grateful. I love you. I love you. And Jolene, his wonderful wife, I, I just said George Jolene. She's here with George today, and I'm so happy to see you both. And Marty Kaufman and Howard Morris had this radical belief that women don't outgrow desire and friendship and humor and relevance. And they created Grace and Frankie, and like all visionaries, they didn't play the game, they changed the game. And we became the longest running series in Netflix history. And thanks to my friend, writer and director, Paul Weitzman. Paul Weitz, forgive me, Paul, I'm so sorry that bird was threatening me. <laughs> Film, uh, his film that he directed and wrote, Grandma and Admission. And I was sitting on the set one day and I called him up and I said, Paul, why don't you write Jane Fonda and me a movie? And by gosh, he did. And uh, that's been shot and we're gonna, yeah, it's gonna come out and I'm very anxious for you to see it all. It's a binge movie. And thanks to everyone involved in our current film, 80 for Brady, where Jane and I are joined by Rita Moreno, and Sally Field. And the four of us are uh, in our 80s, 
Uh, now, Rita and Sally both take an uh, exception to that rule because Sally is only 75 and uh, Rita's 90 <coughs> something or other. <laughs> and uh, so we, we compromised and we just said 80. <laughs> and our collective age is 332 years. You, we love it. I mean, it's so wonderful to be with Jane and Rita and Sally, and you know, you feel like uh, we're like making a teen movie, like a beach blanket movie. <laughs> I mean, they're so young, they're so vibrant, they're so alive and wonderful. And there must be great stories and great parts for women in every stage of their lives. Yeah, yeah. And love and gratitude to the countless friends and colleagues I've worked with over the years. My thanks to everyone at the TCM Classic Film Festival and the TCL Chinese Theater. And I learned that TCL stands for the creative life, and that's a perfect name. I've been thinking about the legends who had this honor bestowed on them uh, over the years and found a way to make this experience truly their own. I've already, uh, I'm today wearing my new white Converse tennis shoes, but I'm also adding a little something special. Um, if they, uh, she, this creature has walked beside me for years, uh, I, I called Edith's mother and I asked her to send me a pair of Edith and Edith got on the phone and she said, yeah, it would be fun if I could be there, but I'm very busy. <laughs> So I'll be putting her little converses in cement next to mine. <laughs> and what a thrill to join a club comprised of such Hollywood icons as Betty Davis, Judy Garland, and Roy Rogers Horse, Trigger. <laughs> There's just one thing I'm wondering, since 1927, when Silent Screen Star and producer Norma Talmadge, you know, accidentally walked through a slab of wet cement and, uh, and started this tradition. There have been about 300 imprints, that, and that means that there are more slabs of concrete than there is room in the forecourt. I totally get that. I mean, a lot of, they take those little slabs and they switch them in and out over, the, over time. And, uh, and it, but it would be kind of ironic if one day, years from now, they're reshuffling the cement blocks and mine ended up locked in a closet. <laughs> Better it than me. <laughs> Thank you.